We need to prepare for a big solar storm. Fortunately, there's procedures for that at nuclear plants, as well as grid operators, which the grid and satellites are the main susceptible objects. Here's why. Back in 1859, the sun released a blast of energy. A giant cloud of particles shot out and raced toward the Earth. It a coronal mass ejection, the Carrington event, a huge blob of magnetized plasma. It took under a day to travel over 150 million kilometers and slam into our planet. Yeah, that one was pretty fast. Though, the slamming was the magnetic field carried by the plasma interacting with Earth's magnetic field. Causing the largest geomagnetic storm ever recorded. Dark red northern lights could be seen as far as the tropics. They were so bright that some people thought cities were on fire. Yeah, this was pretty extreme. And this could be about to happen again. The sun goes through cycles of activity that last about 11 years. So the sun does produce big CMEs regularly. But what matters is direction and magnetic orientation, not just activity. Look at the difference at the beginning of that cycle versus about halfway through where the big storms happen. And right now, we're about here. And we're seeing it. As it peaks, we get these huge rushes of energy. And the magnetic poles of the sun actually flip from the tension. <laughs> Uno reverse card. So what's interesting is even on that graph she just showed, the current cycle is weaker than the one from the 1950s and the 1980s. And again, the hazard isn't just size, it depends on its alignment relative to the Earth's magnetic field. In 1989, back-to-back -back explosions from the sun took out the power grid in Quebec. It took out power lines, but it did not destroy generators or nuclear power plants. It tripped protective systems, which is what they're designed to do. And caused a nine-hour blackout. And that was still smaller than that 1959 event. Pretty sure she meant the 1859 Carrington event that she already talked about. Good news is, today, we're more prepared to predict bad space weather and to protect our world that's very reliant on electronics. Yes, grid operators and satellite teams have procedures now. The big danger is grid-wide cascading failures. Special weather satellites far out in orbit, like these and this, measure solar activity, and they can warn us when things are getting unusually hot. They measure solar wind and field orientation, but the key parameter is the direction of the magnetic field. And if the affected zone happens to include a nuclear plant, the reactors can safely shut down without external power. Inverters, transformers, and switches yards will trip early, and emergency diesel generators are shielded and in hardened structures to ensure safety equipment remains safe. And the grid can do coordinated shutdowns to prevent a rapid cascading failure in the event of a large solar storm. So we are more protected now than we ever were.